Let's break down your sales process a little bit here in the next 15 minutes. So connecting questions. So we talk about connecting questions in the virtual training courses, how connecting questions really take the focus off you and puts it on your potential customer. Okay. How did you used to try to connect in the old sales days before you learned NEPQ? What would you say? Well, you know, I might have listen to like Jordan Belfort. So like enthusiastic as hell, like sharp as attack, I think something like that. And okay. so I get on like, Oh, I'm super excited to connect with you, you know, like, like really enthusiastic. Uh, yeah. When I would hop on to my calls. Mm. Yeah, definitely. How did, how did people react to that? And be real? Um, very few of them reacted very well. Okay. I'd say most of them were like, maybe kind of like, I didn't really have the awareness of it then but they were actually kind of shutting down uh or they're like how would, they, mm. how would they shut down when you're like i'm so excited to be here today it's gonna be great i'm really happy that you're here how would they react to that uh, i guess in their mind they were just hearing like hey so excited for my commission today and i can't wait for you to hand over your credit card and so because of that they felt like their guard needed to be up to protect themselves mm -hmm. so that way they so you, kind of so you immediately were triggering sales resistance unbeknowing to you by the way you were being taught how to sell, right? Yeah, okay. Totally. It's just human behavior one-on-one. What we each have to realize is that within the first seven to 12 seconds of every single sales interaction you're in, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a cold call, whether it's on Zoom, whether it's in person, at a home or a boardroom meeting, doesn't matter. Whether if it's on a doorstep, it doesn't matter. Your prospects are picking up subconsciously, they don't even know it, your social cues based on your tonality and your body language and what you are saying and or asking that yeah. triggers their brain to react in one of two ways. First of all, if you come across excited, needy and attached, it trigger and you don't know the right questions to ask. It actually triggers, like you said, their brain to go into what we call fight or flight mode just behavioral science 101. And they say, th and they try to get rid of you. Oh, well, I, you know, we're really not that interested. Or, uh, you know, now's not a good time, Mason. Uh, maybe we can reschedule or, you know, we already have that or, you know, we're good or, you know, how much money is it going to be? It just triggers them to try to get rid of you. Now, yep. if you understand the right questions to ask, if you understand how to use human behavior to your advantage, if you come across um, detached, like you're not attached to the sale, you're actually detached. If you come across unbiased and you yeah. come across, um, if, if you come across, what's the right word for this? If you come across more natural and collective, just calm, it actually triggers your prospect to become so curious yeah. that they feel like they want to engage with you, that they want to open up to you because you might have something that could be very important for them. So yeah. just give us an example of just one. I mean, there's probably three or four different connecting questions that we have used for your sales structure for your industry, but just give us an example of one that you use. Yeah. I mean, I guess, Jeremy, I was just curious when you, when you went through the webinar with, with, with Taylor, like what, what was it that attracted your attention in the first place? And why do you, why do we teach you how to ask that question? I mean, first to get the focus off of me and onto them, and then also for them to tell themselves why they're even on the call in the first place, to remind yeah. themselves. It's the first part of giving your prospect to persuade themselves. Now, that's not the first question he asked. You're not just going to get on the Zoom call like, hey, now what was it about? The There's a couple of questions before that, but he's giving an example. Okay, let's talk about situation questions. There's probably about three or four that we have you use for your industry. Yeah. Situation questions, we're helping them find out what their current situation is. What did you used to say before you learned NEPQ? I'm not even sure. I think I've kind of banished it from my brain, to be honest. <laughs> you tried to erase the bad memories? <laughs> yeah, I think I would usually start with like, well, what do you think success would be if you were to do a TEDx talk or something like that, as opposed to sort of learning about like them and what's going on in their life and kind of uncovering their their background. So you're asking some like cheesy questions that you are, they already know why you're asking them, right? Yeah, so exactly. to, now what, what is an example of a situation question we taught you how to ask now? Why do we have you ask it? Yeah, I, I guess the number, the first one is always like, just curious, like, what are you doing now to sort of get your message out in the world? Okay. Now really for, for what you do, why do you have to know that? 
well, I need to understand whether or not they're getting their message out in the world and if they even like how they're getting their message out in the world. Yeah, you got to find out what their current situation or we call that the current state is yeah. compared to where they want to be. What what are their future what are their what is their future want to, what do they want their future to be? We call that their objective state. Okay. So situation questions, you're going to ask about three or four different questions that find out what the current situation is. Not only does it help Mason know and have a, a more of an understanding, but more importantly, it helps them have a better understanding of what their current situation is. Because yeah. most people don't even think about that before you get on the call with them, right? No. They have no orientation most of the time. Yeah, right? most of your prospects don't even know what their real problems are before you first start asking them questions that allow them to see what their problems really are, that they didn't know yeah. they had sometimes, or yeah. the consequences of what will happen if they don't do anything about solving the problem, or what caused the problem in the first place. Okay, let's talk about problem awareness questions, because now um, I want you to give an example, problem awareness question that we have you asked. Problem awareness questions bring out their emotional state, yeah. okay? It helps them... Um, find out what their real problems are, why they have the problems, like the root cause, and then how are the problems affecting them? What's one example? There's several problem awareness questions we have you asked, but give me an example of one. Yeah, there's a lot of different angles for my offer, but really, I think the simplest one based off that situation, it would be, do you, do you like the way you're getting your message out in the world right now? And why do we have you asked that? Just point blank, why? To just kind of cut to the chase around whether or not they're happy with their current situation and yeah. satisfied and if there's even a sale to be made, right? Yeah, and, and you're gonna get a, a different response. You're gonna get a third, a third, a third. Some people are like, yeah, I, I, I like it. Or they're gonna say, well, I mean, we we do, but they're kind of in the middle, they're hemming and hawing. Or they're gonna be like, no, I don't like it at all. And they're gonna tell you what they hate, okay? Now, depending on what they say, yeah. is depending on what our next problem awareness question is. If they do say they like it, oh, what do you what do you like? What do you enjoy? See, it's easy. Then we're going to ask a two truths question. We don't have time to get into that. Uh, if they say they don't like it, what do you ask? Well, what, what don't you like about it? Exactly, right? You're finding out what they don't like because you're helping them relive the pain of what they don't like about their problem. Yes. And when they relive the, and there's a lot more to that than just what Mason revealed a lot more. I promise you that pulls out way more emotion than that. That's just like the surface level yeah. right there. Yeah, we're going. yeah. Now let's talk about solution awareness questions. I'm just going to give you an, have you give an example to everybody. You don't have to give away the farm because uh, yeah. there's several solution awareness questions we have you ask for what you sell, but solution awareness questions, get them to focus on what, how it's going to be different for them. Once all these problems, that you've helped them see they had, not by telling them, but by asking questions that allowed them to see that, what their future is going to look like once they're solved. Let's give us an example. I'll just cut to the one that's been by far the most powerful solution awareness question that is yeah. just, this is a game changer. Um, so, so Jeremy, for you to actually go out there and to get on a TEDx and, and to really make the impact that you're meant to make, like what, what would that mean for you to actually be able to, to do that? What would yeah. that mean? Do you notice how Mason is asking that question? Why do we have you act skeptically and ask that question that way? Why not just say like, for you to be able to get on a TEDx stage is like, what would that do for you personally? Why would, why do we have you ask it in the tone you're asking? it? Every time I ask that with that tonality and, and I slow down and I pause, like, what would that actually mean for you? Like it hits at a much deeper level emotionally and it just it's much more meaningful yeah it's meaningful then because it gets the, when you slow down that implies that your question is something very important which triggers their brain to think deeper about what you're asking oh god yeah it works so well yeah you see the difference because i know in the beginning you're asking the questions too fast yeah and they were, they were just giving you like glib answers like surface level answers and i'm like well you got to slow way down you got a verbal pause and you got to really use your body language and tonality, even if they can't see you, because that affects how your tone comes out. And what was the change in how they would respond to that? I mean, that question has the most consistent response that says, they'll say, that would mean I'm living my purpose and actually making the impact in the world I meant to make. And once I hear someone reflect that back to me, it's like, well, clearly we're going to move forward then, you know, like this is something that's really important for them. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So we get them to visualize 
how, like what it's basically you're getting them to visualize being on stage yes. at TEDx, millions of people are watching their video and their message is inspiring and moving the audience and moving the world. And because of that, they're going to make more money in their business. They're going to get their message out. They're going to change the world. You get them to see that, but not by telling them what it's going to be like, because that's just going to go in one ear out the other. But when you ask that, it gets them to visualize them on stage with what you sell. Okay. And then we're going to rip that away when we ask our consequence question yep. that gets them to defend why they have to have that. So let's talk about consequence questions. What's a consequence question that we have you ask for what you sell? Yeah. And, and Jeremy, these are obviously super critical, right? This is where I feel like the sale is, is made or lost. Yeah. I would say. Um, just based off the experience so far. But I, I guess, Jeremy, have you, uh, hold, hold on. Have you considered what happens if you don't get your message out there? You don't actually find a stage so that you can really start to scale your impact? Like what happens then? And what do they say? Uh, like they're usually caught off guard, right? But they're like, a lot of times they'll say, well, I won't let that happen. You know, like that'll be like the deflection. And yeah. then you're like, no, 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 no. But I'm saying what actually happens if you don't do anything about this though and nothing changes yeah are you are you are you willing to settle for that and they defend themselves no no i'm not going to settle well why not <laughs> yeah see you get them to defend themselves on why they have to change their situation now but hold on what if you don't do anything about this though and you just you, you know you you don't ever get on stage and you don't do anything about getting your message out to the world like what happens then Oh my gosh, I don't know. Like I've got to do something about this. Yeah. Okay, so time to make a change, a change possibly. See how we do that? Yeah. I mean, this works so well, guys. Like the other day I had a are you willing to settle for that? And literally it was excuse after excuse after excuse. And he the tone and the energy of the conversation just next day found the funds. What do you know? They appeared, right? It's like completely changed. Had you not learned that. Would that have been a sale you would have made? No, no, no way. Not at all. Yeah, hundred percent. It's zero, zero chance. Because it I, drastically I, affects your income if you don't learn these skills. Hundred percent. How much money do you think you'd be making per month if you had not learned this? Maybe five. Four, five grand at the most. Yeah. yeah. Now you're making almost twenty. That's a big jump in income. Yeah. Five grand a month compared to making twenty grand a month is a little bit of an income change, a little bit of a lifestyle change especially when you're some single dude just traveling around all over the place you want with a beard too. All right. So those are, those are good questions. Now, uh, a lot yeah. of people are, uh, there's some people messaging me here on the phone. Uh, you're asking to join the Facebook sales revolution group. I'm going to have somebody on my team, Chris or Luke, or maybe Valerie, if you guys can drop the, uh, the join link for sales revolution on the YouTube channel and my personal Facebook group, people are asking to join the Facebook group because we do a lot more of this training inside the Facebook group every single week. So they're gonna go ahead and drop the Facebook join link, the, the group in there to Sales Revolution. Go ahead and click on the join link. It's gonna ask you two or three survey questions about what industry you're in, what you sell and your price points so we know what training is gonna help you more, okay? Depending on your industry. As Soon as you fill that out and, and hit submit, it takes you two seconds, Check your DMs later today and someone on my team is going to private message you a free training on objection prevention. It's a 35 minute training on how to prevent objections from even happening in your prospect's mind. It's Jedi. OK, so they're going to message that sales revolution join group. Go ahead and join that today. Like Join that right now, because after we end this, it, it'll be off here. Go ahead and join that Facebook group now. Um, we go live in that Facebook group about three to four, sometimes five times a week. And we typically give away a little slice of training every single week for free, even for people that are not even our clients, just to help you sell more. All right, Mason. So then we kind of go into your presentation. We're not going to talk about that today because we don't have time. Um, and then after your presentation, because I think you do a one call close, right? Usually, yeah. Okay. Unless so it's usually there's a red flag. Yeah, one or two call close, but then you're gonna you're gonna ask what are called commitment questions. How did you used to try to close when you sell? Uh, the price is either this in full or this is a payment plan. Which works best for you? You know, <laughs> like. And how would they react to that realistically? 
And they're like, I'm not sure I even want to do it, <laughs> you know, or, or like, uh, neither, <laughs> you know, like, a lot yeah, the of often close, right? Triggers sales resistance. Cause you're just yeah. assumptive. Now what's a commitment question that we taught you how to ask there to get your prospect yeah. to follow through. These are, these are so huge. These are just it's so incredible. I actually taught a girl I was dating how to use these. And the other day she closed an apartment that she's getting. It's hilarious. So anyways, I mean, Jeremy, just just curious. I mean, does this process, does this feel like it could be the answer for you? See how he said that, see his tone out. Do you feel like this process could be the answer for you? See how he paused there. Why do we have you pause there when you say that? I don't want a knee-jerk response. Yeah. I want a thoughtful response. Yeah. Because if you get a knee jerk response, what's going to happen is they're going to give you a false yes if they do yeah. say yes. And if it's a no, you're not going to necessarily be able to uncover what's actually going on. Yeah. 100%. Time. It gets them to think deeper about the question you're asking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mason, uh, well done. Uh, you know, I know this was helpful for everybody who's on here. Now, look, everybody, if you're, if you're wanting to know, if you want to learn how to sell with these type of skills, because we just give you a little, little slices, like little hors d'oeuvres here and there in the Facebook group, little hors d'oeuvres. If you want the whole pie, if you want the puzzle where you can go from making four or five grand a month, like Mason was to 20,000 plus a month, uh, six months from now, we're probably be averaging 30 to 35 grand a month selling the same thing and upwards because he's still learning. If you want to learn those type of skills that thousands of salespeople are learning right now, like our clients going through the virtual training courses in our, in our training, yeah. uh, a group training in the comment section, just post hashtag NEPQ. So just post hashtag NEPQ and either me or our CEO, Matt Ryder, or our VP, Marco Cortese, will message you more details to see if we can help you as well. Um, Mason, thank you for being on. Any last words of advice for anybody listening here today? Just, just do it. <laughs> like, just, just go for the leap. I mean, if you're committed to actually being the best you can be in, in sales or building a business, then I'd really invite you to take a look at the cost of not getting the proper training versus the cost or the investment of getting the proper training. You know yeah. what I mean? I totally agree. It's, you have to, you have to like, which, which is more risky? Like you have to, you have to, for any industry, which is more risky. Okay. Is it more risky for somebody to get the funding to, cause we have like 20 different training programs. Anybody can get into our training now. It doesn't matter. Is it more risky to get the funding together to be able to learn advanced skills that work with human behavior? So you quadruple your income, make a ton more money than you are now, or is it more risky for you to do nothing at all? Keep selling the exact same way you are now get the same results you are now and nothing ever changes, which yeah. is more risky. I think we all know the answer at this point. So in the comment post, hashtag NEPQ, someone will message you more details, check your messenger. Mason, thanks for being on, man. You're the man. I, I yeah. You're just barely starting too, though. Yeah, we're, we're just getting started. I feel like a newbie. I feel like a you're newbie. still a newbie. I, I, you know, I call a lot of you guys in the advanced inner circle that are making the money you're making. I just call you like grasshoppers. Like you're still little lambs. <laughs> every, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll take that as a as a compliment somehow. <laughs> every every month you're getting better. So keep up the great work. Tomorrow we will be going live in the Facebook group. I'm at my lake house this whole week, but I'm still going to go live tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern for about 35 to 40 minutes with a live Q&A. So make sure you turn on your notifications on your cell phone that you get notified when we go live here in the Sales Revolution Facebook group. We only go live in the, in the Sales Revolution group on Thursday to answer questions. So if you're on the YouTube channel now or if you're on my personal Facebook and you have questions you want answered, make sure you join the Sales Revolution group right now. We're gonna send you a link on my Facebook or on YouTube, make sure you join because on Thursdays we go live to answer Q&A. We only do that with members who are in the Sales Revolution Facebook group. Mason, awesome. see you soon. And I'll, you. actually I'll see you on the, yeah, see you on the training here pretty shortly here, the Inner Circle training. And then everybody else will see you tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern for Q&A. Thanks everybody. Thanks Mason. All right. See ya.